What can Game of Thrones teach us about leadership? Well, in honesty, probably quite a lot. There's several lessons in there throughout the series, but I want to focus in on one. Now, if you are a Game of Thrones fan and for whatever reason you haven't seen the end, stop watching now because there are spoiler alerts coming. Game of Thrones managed to keep us hooked for almost a decade. Week after week, month after month, year after year, we kept coming back. The question is why? What is it that kept us so loyal? Because as leaders, that's what we want, right? We want to create loyalty. We want to keep our people loyal to us. And when you think about it, the way to discover that is to actually look at the polar opposite of what you'd think. Let's look at what pissed people off who watched it. What pissed off the viewer? What pissed off the fans? And that happened a lot during the end, if you remember the last two. we were Most people were pretty upset with the way that Cersei died. It wasn't quite satisfying enough after the fact that she'd been such a horrible human being throughout. So that wasn't quite as satisfying as we liked. Then we have Daenerys' demise into craziness <laughs> that seemed to happen too fast for most people. Why was that? What, why did that upset so many people? Here's the thing. If we look back on that show, let's go all the way back to the very first show. At the beginning of the, of the series, you know, here's this fantasy show. We're not sure if we're going to like it or not. We start watching it. We get emotionally engaged. We get a little bit attached to the lead character, uh, Ned Stark. And what happens to him at the end of the show? Boom! His head cuts off. Holy crap! We just got invested in this character in one show and you cut his head off. There's an emotional connection. As leaders, we have to have our people become emotionally engaged with the theme of what it is we're doing, with what it is we're doing, and with those leaders. And what's more is, can we do it in such a way that that emotional connection transfers as a leader leaves and another leader comes in? Our leader, Ned Stark, disappears. Now we're looking for where to place that emotional connection. That is what they did masterfully. When you think about Game of Thrones, it was fantastic writing. Of course it was, but lots of shows have fantastic writing. Well, you go, but it was emotional connection. Yeah, well, we've had that with other shows too. Well, there was dragons. Well, the truth is there's been shows with dragons before. So why did this work so well? And it's fascinating because there are many very strong writing threads that run throughout this show, but I want to pick on one right now for you to see how they masterfully did this. When we look at the end, as I said, people were upset with the way Cersei died. They were upset with Daenerys' demise into craziness. But let's just look at this for a moment. What were we pulled through from pretty early on when we saw this fragile girl who actually we saw two fragile girls, one in Sansa and the other one in Daenerys, who seemed to be victims of their circumstance who come up through their power. We watch them grow in their power. We watch these young women become powerful, powerful women as they, as they evolve. Now, here's what's interesting about it, is that as Daenerys raises in power, she starts to crush those who are cruel and mean, and she talks about breaking the wheel. Right there, we get a sense of Daenerys' purpose. She's constantly relaying this purpose to us. She's sharing with us that, that she is going to get rid of tyranny. And we are so behind her. We're cheering her on every episode that she's in. We want her to win because she is going to end tyranny. And that's very exciting to us. And then we've got all this emotional evocation as she crushes the cruel slavers and she... she destroys armies and and what happens is other armies come behind her they believe in this purpose that is powerful you see what brings people in what keeps them loyal is purpose you've heard me talk about that a lot but also the emotional connection. If you have purpose without emotional connection, it doesn't work. If you have emotional uh, upheaval but no purpose, it's just craziness, it's just chaos. What we need is purpose and emotional evocation. Now, we're not being looking at cutting people's heads off or any of that kind of craziness, no. But we have to get our people emotionally believing in that we are going to crush some wheel. Every purpose has an enemy. 
every purpose has to have something that it's going up against for people to rally around it. That is, that is in our nature, that is in our DNA, that is in the psychology of who we are at our most basic level. So what I wanna put forward to you is a great lesson here from Game of Thrones, and that is this. Purpose plus emotion, deep emotion, feeling, is what will keep people loyal. So stay curious, my friends, stay curious about how whether your purpose is so clear that you can create that deep emotional evocation. Because when you do, it changes absolutely everything and you'll have loyalty in a way you've never even imagined. Dove Baron, fullmontyleadership.com. I'm out.